Now, God actually knew the morality he was giving the people was too high for them to attain. He knew that they would fall short in their efforts. He knew moral perfection was beyond them. And so he gave them the ceremonial part of the law. The ceremonial part of the law introduced them to the idea that someone or something could take the punishment for their wrongdoing on their behalf. With it, God effectively said, If you sin, your just punishment is death. However, I am going to provide you with a way to transfer your guilt to another so that they can die on your behalf, free you of your guilt, and allow you to go on living. The ceremony involved finding a pure and unblemished animal and taking it to the temple where the temple priest would perform a ritual that would transfer the guilt of the human to the animal. You'll have heard the term scapegoat before. A scapegoat is an innocent person who takes the blame for the wrongdoing of others. Well, this is what they literally did with real goats and other animals like lambs. They would perform a ritual whereby the wrongdoing or the blame of the human would be placed on the head of the goat or the lamb. Remember how we talked about man's ability as a spiritual being to imbue things with holiness or profanity? Well, unblemished lambs or goats could have the sin imbued into them, like empty vessels that could have sin poured into them in a sense. Then, with the sins of the human being effectively transferred to the animal, the priest would sacrifice the animal and the sin would be punished in its body. The animal would effectively suffer the death that belonged to the human so that the human could go free. The animal would pay the debt, it would die on behalf of the human. And because human beings are continually racking up new sins, this ceremony was to be carried out on a regular basis. It taught the people the basic principle that sin must always lead to death. Or as Hebrews puts it, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Now I know a lot of atheists like to portray God as a bloodthirsty monster because of this system, but it's got to be noted that God didn't even like this system. He didn't enjoy seeing animals sacrificed at all. The writer of Hebrews tells us, You did not want animal sacrifices or grain offerings or animals burned on the altar or other offerings for sin, nor were you pleased with them, though they are required by the law of Moses. In Isaiah, God himself says, I am sick of your burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fattened cattle. I get no pleasure from the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. God says he wishes that they would just be obedient to his moral law so that they didn't have to sacrifice any animals at all. He says, Give up your evil ways, learn to do good, seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the cause of orphans, fight for the rights of widows. Samuel says, Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. God would have preferred if his people were just obedient to his moral requirements so that there was never any cause to shed any blood, or at least a minimal need. It brought him no pleasure to see sacrifices, but because of his goodness, his righteousness and perfection, all sin has to be punished with death and there is no other way around it. Justice demands that sin is dealt with. The ceremonial part of the law was just a concession to human weakness. When you play a video game, you don't want to crash the racing car or cause your character to fall off the cliff and die. But if you make a mistake and things go wrong, it's good to know that there's a continue or reset button that allows you to keep on going. It's the same thing with the ceremonial law. It wasn't God's desire to have animals killed, but it acted like a reset button, a last resort for sinful people who couldn't help but go wrong and who therefore deserved to die. The ceremonial part of the law involved very specific instructions on things like circumcision, temple design, diet, clothing, tithing, rituals, sacrifices and consecrated objects. It was a lot of work to keep that system going and it was a full-time job for the priests of the temple and it meant that the mosaic system looked like this. In other words, at this time, there were God-ordained laws on neutral things under the law of Moses. Our left-hand side of the diagram did indeed have a God-ordained division at this stage. Restrictions on what people could wear and what they could eat and that kind of thing. Now why would God do this? Why would he make up such arbitrary rules? Well, firstly, remember God wasn't just their God, but he was also their civil king at this point as well. And just as our civil government set specific laws on things like taxes, God set specific laws on things like tithing. For the same reason, God set laws on food consumption, which weren't as arbitrary as one might think, and were in fact for the people's own health and protection. For example, God told them not to eat shellfish. Now, even today, whenever someone is struck with food poisoning, the culprit is more often than not 
those slightly whiffy clams from the hotel buffet. Shellfish is notorious for absorbing the pollution of its environment and causing sickness. In the same way, God took mushrooms off the food list. Mushrooms can be highly poisonous, are difficult to tell apart, and will easily kill. God said to make sure that meat was fully cooked and blood was drained properly. Again, we know that blood infections are often fatal, even today. God said not to eat pork. Do a little research on the facts about pig meat and you'll discover that this was particularly good advice in those days. So God was protecting the health of his people by these rules. He was being a good civil king. And then finally, these rules on the ceremonial part of the law were necessary because the sacrifices had to be carried out properly, with due order, in a way that would teach the people reverence for God's holiness, and in a way that would effectively transfer the guilt from the human being to the animal. For this, the people needed specific instruction.